Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. This is America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. And I got to say what's happening to all my patriots. Dale Cotter. Understand that Carl Henderson. I got to say what's happening to Veranda Odoms. I got to say what's happening to all my patriots. And understand this, let me take y'all to the very beginning for Eddie, baby. This is the very beginning. It was February and the fat man was being released from Federal Penitentiary, which was Milan, Michigan. That's where he was being released from. When he walked out, him and a man by the name of Richard Wakefield of Penguin had put the move together while they was in jail. Understand they was in Leavenworth, Kansas City with Stonewall Jackson. They was in there with another brother by the name of Richard Canales, was my father's cellmate later on, but his first cellmate was Stonewall Jackson. Then after that, Richard Canales would be his next cellmate. But let me take you into Richard Wakefield and Eddie Jackson planning to put the thing down up there in Leavenworth, Kansas City. They was mapping all across the world where the best dope was. They was mapping, baby. They called it mapping. They took the map out and mapped where the best dope was and Richard Wakefield was gonna go get it. Understand the Penguin was the best smuggler I ever met in my lifetime. Richard Wakefield was the best, understand that. So Richard Wakefield put the move down they gonna go to Thailand. Understand this was the move in the Thailand. And there was a brother. Understand this. Let me explain something to all of you out there. Federal Penitentiary will give you connections all over the world. And you will know people all over the world. Understand that. Federal Penitentiary turns you on to people all over the world that you never would have met otherwise understand that. So a lot of times, niggas hook up in the federal penitentiary and be getting served. They find they connect out of federal penitentiary. So a lot of niggas who never went to jail, never did no time in the penitentiaries, that's why they can't stretch out all across the country. That's why Demetrius could sell cocaine all across the country because he knew niggas all across the country from being in federal penitentiary. So it broadens your horizon. Being in federal penitentiary, it ain't no good thing, but if you there, you better make the best out of the time you there. Make the best out of the time you there, because it ain't no good time, but you better make the best out of any time. Understand, and the bad times can become the good times. Understand that too. So let me take you on into how Brothers was mapping in the federal penitentiary. So they had a brother in there from Thailand as well as I tell you all. And he knew where the job was in Thailand. And Richard Wakefield and Eddie Jackson and him, three of them, put the move together. Understand that? He knew where it was. Wakefield had the people to go get it and bring it back. And Eddie Jackson was going to sell it. That's how it was set up. Wake and the Thai man put the move down. The Thai man knew where the plug was. Wake had the people and Eddie Jackson was coming out on time to move it. So understand this. This was the Thailand plug straight out of Thailand playing in Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary. And this is how it hit the streets, baby. This is how the planning in the penitentiary hit the streets. When the fat man get out, Marion Wakefield and 20 other people had went to Thailand to swallow dope and come back into the country. And they came in about a week after my father got out of jail. Mary and Wakefield and all of them came in over, over in on a house over on Kentucky. And when we went over on Kentucky, they was, dope was everywhere. I mean, they was throwing up, niggas was in the bathroom throwing up, and dope was everywhere. Everybody was basically trying to swallow two keys or more. And you had 20 people. And at the end of all them throwing up and doing all of that, they had 120 pounds 
because at this time they wasn't doing it in keys, they was doing it in pounds. So they had 120 pounds. 40 pounds went to Eddie Jackson, 40 pounds went to Richard Wakefield, and 40 pounds went to Marion Wakefield. Understand this. And off the streets we ran. Boom! We left Kentucky that next day and we went to hitting the streets awful hard. Understand? We went down to the projects, me and Hucker Buck. And there was another guy by the name of LeVan Hawkins down in the project hustling at that time. And he was getting the most money in the projects at that time, a guy by the name of LeVan Hawkins. Now, we come out of Thailand, understand this. The dope is 93% pure. The dope costs you about $12,000 a pound. That's 16 ounces, baby. $12,000 for 16 ounces of a 93% pure China white, baby. China white out of Thailand. Now you got to get it back to America. Because it ain't worth nothing in Thailand, but it's worth a fortune in America. Remember, I always told y'all this. Dope ain't worth shit over in these other countries where it's at. Dope ain't worth shit in Mexico. Dope ain't worth shit in Thailand. It's worth all the money once you get it to America. So that's why a smuggler is worth his weight in gold. And ain't nobody touching this package. Only him touching it. 93% pure. When the fat man touch it, he'll put on the streets what he want on the streets. And what he put on the streets, LeVan Hawkins had to run the fuck out of town because he couldn't hustle against it. Understand what I'm telling you. A nigga coming in with pounds for $12,000 a pound, China white, 93% pure hair on, out of Thailand. The only thing LeVan Hawkins could do was run out of town for cover wherever he went. Because the projects belong to the fat man. Huck a buck, freaky Steve, Petey Weedy, and all the rest. Understand when we hit the projects, the fat man took them over immediately. That shit in the van Hawkins was selling. Pops went, bought a pack of that shit, put his finger in it, and laughed. <laughs> he laughed at that shit in the van Hawkins was selling. He laughed at it and said, watch out, baby, because here I come. Understand that the fat man put a motherfucker down, understand that the project... At this point, I went and got Tracy, my man Tracy. Gave Tracy some action. He passed it on to his man, Pep. So Pep come, and they take this China White out of Thailand, and he run up to Boston with it. He flipped his first package in Boston, but when he come back to Detroit, understand this, he flipped his first package in Boston. That's where he took it. He asked the fat man, did he have any problems with him taking her up to Boston? And the fat man said, long as I get paid, I don't give a fuck where you take it to. So Pep took his first package up to Boston. Understand that. Took him about two or three weeks to get rid of it, something like that. I had two weeks or something. When he came back, he seen Pops. Pops called me after he had already seen Pep, got the 50000 And he had served Pep again. He had told, hey, your man had been back, this, that, and that. So now, however the shit went, Pep decided to stay here. He decided not to go back to Boston. He took these 50 quarters and put them down on Nardi. That was his headquarter. Nardi Park is where his headquarter was. Understand that. So he put the shit down over there and found success the first goddamn day. He did 10,000 the first day he came down. That's what he say, but we know the nigga probably did 20, 30, or 40,000 the first day he came down. But naturally, he gonna try to be slick and lie. Oh, I only did 10. We can feel that, bro. You ain't slick, because we got the bag and we putting it down. And it's all right, because you was a real one. Understand that? And can't nobody in this world take away from that man. He was a real one. That man put that package down, bought that man's paper back immediately. And the show began, baby. We started about in June. And we didn't end 
into Christmas time. Right around now, we ended, and Pep was having this big Christmas party. He used to always have a big Christmas party. His thing, he would always have a big Christmas party. So we had put it down from like June, and we was out late November, December, and crap, Pep was having a huge Christmas party. Everybody was coming to it. I mean, all the young boys, everybody was coming to Pep's Christmas party because he would always have a smash Christmas party. First time I ever drunk pipe of champagne was at that party, baby. I went to Pep's Christmas party and got damn. Woo, I left that motherfucker, baby. I could barely see. I don't know how me and Trisha got home. We was on Greenfield. To this day, I threw up from Greenfield all the way to Oak Park. We was living in Oak Park. I threw all the way up from the goddamn party, all the way up, all the way home. Every time I would pull up to a light, I would pull over and start throwing up like a motherfucker. All the way home. God damn it, that was one hell of a goddamn party, boy. He had a bottle of Piper champagne that big. We had been drinking Pipers all night. But at the end of the party, he would open the biggest bottle and pour everybody in the party a shot of Pipers. I mean, he was doing it right. That was my man. Understand at this time, that was my man. And we was having a ball. We was lighting the town up. And after that, we had ran through, as I told y'all, we took 40 pounds and made it into 120 keys. That's what Eddie Jackson took, 40 pounds. Richard Wakefield, 40 pounds. We would wind up moving for Marion Wakefield, but after Marion Wakefield ran off, she ran off with Wake's money and her money. Understand that at the end of the show, when they got popped on the plane, now, after they ran out, we ran through all of that job. We had all that paper. She goes back to Thailand, take another 20 people. One of the girls in the club was a dope fiend. She goes in the bathroom after they all had swallowed. They all had about two, three keys in them. They had did the swallow move. They all on the airplane coming home. This bitch get needing a fix. She go back in the bathroom on the airplane Throw the goddamn dope up, blow a fucking blow in the bathroom, and fucking OD right there in the bathroom on the airplane. The dope right out there, she and OD. So when they come get this bitch, they get the dope that she threw up, which was a balloon, which killed her. She in there with a whole balloon full of pure China white. She and OD on the toilet. Now they grab everybody that was with her that was in her party, it was 20 of them. And they grabbed all of them. After she OD, they grabbed Marion Wakefield, they grabbed them, all 20 of them. Took them to jail, locked up most of the smugglers because they held them and made them throw it up and all of them was dirty. So all of them got busted because of her going in the bathroom, throwing up a balloon. They snatched all of them up Took all of them to, like I told y'all, they put you in a cell with a toilet that won't flush. And you'll be there until you give a passage or throw it up. And when they passed it, they got it out the stool, charged every one of them. And all 20 of them got 20 years in Thailand sleeping on rice patties. The worst time in the world you can do is in Thailand, sleeping on rice patties for 20 years, baby. That's what they got. Marion Wakefield got out because she had so much paper. She worked her way. The federal court gave her a bond and brought her back to America. Thailand kept the other 21s and sentenced them. Marion Wakefield came back to America. Understand that. She bonded out, come back to America. She going back and forth to court. Marion Wakefield come up missing one day. Never seen again. Feds looking for everybody looking for. She done ran out the world. What I know Marion Wakefield had over $7 million. Five of it was Wake, and she had another five of her own, and she had damn near pushed all that shit. 
So Marion Wakefield could have had $10 million, I know for a fact, when she ran out the world. And that's something to run out the world with, baby. And I ain't never seen Marion Wakefield again. I ain't never heard of her coming in in handcuffs on the news that they had caught her. Never. Marion Wakefield was another one who successfully ran out the world after her girl threw that shit up on the plane and got all of them fucked up. All of them got 20 years sleeping and they was trying to deport after the federal government got through with it, they was going to shoot Marion Wakefield's ass back to Thailand to do time with the rest of her crew. But Marion Wakefield wasn't having that shit, and she skipped down and do. Understand, Marion Wakefield wasn't having that shit, so she skipped down and down and do with about $10 million, and that's something to run off with. Understand, I only know two people in my lifetime I've ever been around to run off. One was Marion Wakefield, and she did it successfully. The other one was my man, the Puerto Rican man, Tattoo. They popped Tattoo coming in to Dallas, Texas, the hardest airport in the country. If you smuggling, don't ever come into Dallas, Texas, because they got some shit for smugglers in Dallas, Texas. The hardest one ever, the hardest airport, the hottest airport in America to come in is down there in Dallas, Texas. I advise you not to do it, baby. But this is America Real True Street Crime on Patreon telling my man Gregory Wilson what's happening and my man Philip Thompson, your shirt on the way, baby. Understand that, Philip. Your shirt on the way, baby. And I'm just trying to introduce you all to how I came in the game with 120 keys of China White straight out of Thailand, running competition against LeVan Hawkins, which wouldn't be for very long. LeVan got his hat and coat and got the fuck on, baby, because he knew the fat man was back and was back to claim the projects. And anybody who wanted some action, come on, get it, baby, because we're going to put it down better. I'm sure that any of you can, because we're coming out of Thailand, baby, for about $12,000 a pound. 93% pure, and whatever you got on the streets, as the fat man did, he laughed at that shit. He said, hey, baby, that's about 12% dope that he giving them niggas. Understand that the fat man put that finger down and tell you exactly what it was. He got to laughing, because he knew how, uh, how easy it was going to be to run the Van Hawkins out of town. He knew how easy it was going to be to run LeVan Hawkins out of town after he seen the blow he was selling. Understand that. And watch out on the west side, baby. Watch out over there on Narden Park. Because there's scag on the way, baby. For all of you who remember back in that day, scag is on the way. Understand that. That's scag was on the way, baby, and that's straight up China White. And understand, that mixed jive that he put down coming from that scag, he said he was putting a 50 on it, but the black dispatch said he was putting an 80 on it. So what you think? A nigga always gonna try to pull your leg, but the fat man was gonna give a nigga the action anyway. Cause we had 120 keys to get rid of, baby. We need you to move. We don't care what you making because we making what we make, baby. Understand that. We took 40 pounds, baby, and made it into 120 keys. And in the middle of the run, we got 80 keys in the goddamn feds moving to the apartment building where all 80 keys are stashed at. What you think about that? The feds move into the apartment building where 80 keys is right downstairs in the basement. And Calvin is upstairs on the second floor, and it's 80 keys downstairs in the basement, baby. And the feds then moved in to Geneva. God damn. That's some hell of a heat, baby. That's some heat for your ass when the feds is sleeping on top of your sack. That's some heat for your ass. Now, how you gonna get rid of 80 keys in the feds 
They camped out. Hey, the feds that made a camp right on top of the Mady Keys. They came in and paid five months rent in advance. And that's how the black man knew they was the fed. Calvin pulled in, paid security deposit, all of that, and then turned around and paid rent for six months in advance. Understand that. Pulled up in a new Cadillac Seville Burgundy with Chicago plates. Me and the fat man watching the other feds sitting out there while Calvin is in there renting an apartment from my mother, from Annie Mae and my mother. And my father is outside watching the other feds sitting in the Cadillac waiting on Calvin to come in there and give us six months, month for rent, security, deposit, and all. Understand that. And pitch a tent on top of the sack. That's what Calvin did. He pitched a tent on top of the sack, but he didn't know it, baby. If he only knew what y'all think about that. If he only knew, God damn, he hit a home run and didn't even know it. He pitched a tent on top of the sack, right there at 277 Geneva Highland Park, which was headquarters for distributing the sack. Understand, that's where we distributed 120 keys with the feds sitting on top of us for 80 of them. We distributed 80 keys with Calvin sitting right on top of us and the feds watching hard. Robert Muller was a part of that fed team, if y'all know who that is. Robert Muller was a part of that fed team who had pitched a tent on top of us on 277 Geneva. And Conway Twitty was leading up the investigation. Conway Twitty, Robert Muller, understand the fat man got them all on top of us and we got to get rid of 80 keys and Calvin, they didn't put Calvin on the second floor, baby, and gave us six months worth of rent off the cuff. Understand. So stay tuned, and I'm going to take you through the whole sort of affair. How we wind up in Mexico after the Thailand thing run out, after we get through slanging in Thailand, we on our way to Mexico, baby. We ain't getting nothing out of the States. Understand that. We were smugglers. And right here on America, real, true street crime, I'm going to break y'all into the smuggling game and the real money out of it. Swallowing. Understand, but Bin Laden fucked the swallowing game up. Because now when you walk through an airport, put them up, baby. They got to take a picture of all this shit. And if any balloons in there, you might as well get ready to be escorted to that cell with no flushing water, no running water, no flushing toilet, and wait on a bowel movement. Because you got your way on your way to penitentiary. And that's exactly what they did to them soldiers coming out of Thailand. And all of them got 20 years sleeping in sleeping on rice patties. The fat man used to always send them money, even after Marion Wakefield's Skedaddle Battle Dude. The fat man used to get people money to send them. Understand? Because they was real soldiers. And they got fucked up over there in Thailand. They got 20 years in Thailand sleeping on rice patties. Some of the hardest times you can do. And that's where smuggling can wind up. You can wind up in the very country you started off smuggling in. And you might not want to wind up there. Because that might be some real hard time. Understand that. So subscribe, share, and like right here at America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. And let me shout out to my man, Vino. I'm checking you out, Vino. I stopped by and tried to give you some action, Vino, but you was gone. I stopped over there at the hookah shop, baby, and hollered at my man, Vino. And he was out, but we had to stop in and holler at him over there on Davidson, Vino. And my man, Louis Stevens, baby, what's going on with you, baby? Looking good over there. My man, Sweet Lou, baby. Call him Sweet Lou, understand. Sweet Lou Stevens, baby. Sweet Lou Stevens. Go ahead on, Sweet Lou. Go ahead on with it, Sweet Lou. Understand that. I like that name. Sweet Lou Stevens. You know how Barney Mac used to say, go ahead on with it, Lou. Go ahead on with it, Sweet Lou. Go on, put it down over there on a the, on the Big Boss film phone. Put it down, Sweet Lou, over there on Big Boss Film. 
understand that. And we got to give a shout out. Simmons Law, check her out at this holiday time and she'll help you out. Simmons Law, check her out and she'll help you out. Jelani's Taste the Table, get you some of that 420 style sweet potato pie or perhaps one of them 420 style turkeys for Christmas, baby. Try one of them 420 style turkeys for Christmas. Understand that. And as I say, top tier cuss 313, super kid for the weekend, baby. Top tier cuss 313, super kid for the weekend. And Big Boss Film on YouTube is Courtney Brown Jr. too. And Motown Mafia Podcast on Spotify is Courtney Brown Jr. too. And as I tell you all, drop a dime and I'll blow your mind, baby. Drop a dime, and I'll blow your mind. Come on up to exit 153, Bay City, Michigan, baby, and drop a dime, and I'll blow your mind. And don't forget to stop in for happy hour, baby. We got something for you for happy hour. So drop a dime, and I'll blow your mind. Twice as fine if you drop out, drop in doing happy hours, baby. So come on in. Stop. And check us out up here in Bay City, baby. Drop a dime, and we're going to blow your mind. And happy hour is in effect, baby. Happy hour is in effect. So come on up. The first two hours we open, we got some show enough specials for you, baby. In the last two hours before we close, those are our happy hour hours. Come on in. Soon as we open, happy hour is on. The first two hours when he open, happy hour is on. We got happy hour specials that you can't get no other time. And come in the last two hours before we close. Happy hour specials that you can't get no other time. Let me give you an example of happy hour and how happy hour works. If it's an ounce that costs you $200, say we is Khalif, you come in during happy hour and we automatically give it to you for $150 an hour. That's how we do for happy hour. But that's happy hour if it costs $230 an hour. Knock $50 off during happy hour, we give it to you for $180 an hour. So when you come in during happy hours, look at the price, knock $50 off, and walk on out with an ounce of it, baby. If it's $230, come on in during happy hour. If it's $250, knock that $50 off, come on in doing happy hour and walk out with it for 200 when it would have cost you 250 if you wait until happy hour expires. So come on in, baby, and we're going to start giving points, everything up here in Bay City. We're going to start giving you points every time you come in, like at the car wash. We're going to give you a card. You come in, spend some money, we're going to stamp it. And when you come in 10 times, we're going to give you that free, come in free. Understand, we're going to get a card. Every time you come in, we're going to put a stamp on it. When you get the 10, you win, baby. So I got to tell y'all, we here in America, Real True Street Crime on Patreon, telling you all to come on up to Bay City and drop a dime, and we're going to blow your mind, baby. That's for sure. Come to Bay City, drop a dime, and we're going to blow your mind. And as I say to you all, subscribe, share, and like. And this is only the beginning, baby. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. Understand that. This ain't the end. It's just the beginning. So stay tuned. Subscribe, share, and like. And I got that interview of Eddie the Fat Man Jackson. I got somebody working real hard to get it over there at Channel 4. Mark Crims is who did the interview. And we got some shots of it over there on Big Boss Film. Mark Crims. If you want to see the actual Mort Krim, take a look over there on Big Boss Film. And Mort Krim did the whole interview on Channel 4. Understand that. And it's going to come at you a little bit, 15, 10, 15 minutes of time over there on America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. You're going to be able to see the whole interview of the fat man, Eddie Jackson. But you're going to have to come over there to America, Real True Street Crime on Patreon, and you will see the interview. Not many ever did it. 
not many brothers ever invited him out there to his house in Southfield and told him, come on in. And on that interview, they show you the entire house, everything, the swimming pool, all of the cars. More Krim take you through the fat man's playpen. Understand, more Krim take you through the fat man's playpen. And that interview is awful close to being unleashed and released. It's real close to being unleashed and released. Coming to you from America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. And I guarantee you, it's worth five dollars, baby. I bet you that. Like when a nigga knock on the door at French Road, I guarantee you what I had him out of that door was worth five dollars, baby. I guarantee you when a nigga knocked on my door at French Road, let me just explain to you how we did it at 3875 French Road. A whole lot of times, we used to run for two for five, baby. So we used to give you two nickels for five dollars, and both of them was rocks. Them motherfuckers would break boulders and give you two for five, baby. That was one of our specials at 3875 French Row. We used to give you two for five, baby. And that's how we do it. If you knock on my door for five dollars, you might get two for five. So subscribe, share, and like, and let me leave you on the words of the fat man, Eddie Jackson, Big Bear Cola, Mr. President. Subscribe, share, and like, and you're going to be seeing a lot of me. And have a merry, merry, merry Christmas, a happy New Year's, and thank you to all my patrons and all anybody who looks or subscribes or check me out on YouTube understand that over there on Big Boss Film, understand that over there on American Dope, understand that anybody who checks me out anywhere I am, I got to say thank you, especially right here on America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. So G Twilight, stay tuned, baby. And Ken Kid, I got you, baby. I'm coming right at you. And as I say to all of you, Anybody who joins up and give me a $25 script, I got a t-shirt or a sweatshirt coming right at you, baby. So join up right here on America Real True Street Crime. And after the holidays, we finna show enough. Get busy, baby. But have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy, happy New Year's. A happy, happy New Year's. And subscribe and stay tuned, baby. Because I'm coming all the way live.